I worked with this dude and he totally gamed the system. He knew what our managers want, right? They wanted activities. So homeboy just made a bunch of phone calls, didn't leave messages, didn't do anything. And then at the end of the day, he put all these activities in Salesforce. And you know what happened? The boss was like, oh, Mike is such a hard worker. He's doing a great job. Keep it up, Mike. We're just so darn proud of you. All this wonderful activity. Why can't you guys be like Mike? Mm-hmm. And you know what happened two weeks later, right? They found out that Mike numbers were bogus. He wasn't doing anything really to sell. He was just gaming the system. Call, hang up, call, hang up. And that's not selling. I feel that sometimes salespeople are like water. They will find a path of least resistance. And especially when it comes towards your program that's going to incentivize them, your commission plans, your structures of those things. If they can find a way to game the system, believe you me, we're going to, I mean, they're going to do it. (laughs) In today's episode, we're going to talk about how you can fix some of these programs so they can be more effective, not only for the company, but for the sales rep so they can feel that they've earned something and they actually can win. This episode is brought to you in part by TSE Certified Sales Training Program. It's a program designed to help sales rep and sales team to improve their skills. Teaches you how to find the right customers, what activities, what strategies work, how you go about asking the right questions to build strong value, and what you need to do to close more deals. If you want to test it out for yourself, go to the salesevangelist.com slash free course to get first two modules absolutely free. Again, the salesevangelist.com slash free course. This episode is also brought to you in part by Audible. Knowing that you're a savvy salesperson, you're here, you want to learn, you want to grow. Check out Audible. They have thousands of titles that you can choose from. Take advantage of the 30-day free trial as well as a free book. Simply go to audibletrial.com slash T-S-E. Again, audibletrial.com slash T-S-E. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, we're going to talk about incentivizing your sales team. As a sales leader, you know your sales reps are going to be out there doing outbound calls. They're going to try to close deals. And you want to incentivize them so that they're doing their job, that they're happy, that they're earning something, that they're feeling good. Because you know in the natural run of things that if they're doing well and if they're doing their job, they're going to love you and the company is also going to make some money on top of that. You know what I mean? There's a book that I love. It's called The Sales Development Playbook. It's by Trish Bartuzzi. And if you have not checked it out, we have a link back in the show notes. Trish was on our podcast a while back and the book is absolutely amazing. She lays out plenty of different concepts that help organizations improve their sales skills and make sure you guys have the proper processes in place, as well as giving you some tips and advice. And one section is all about hiring, making sure you bring on the right people, but also incentivizing them. Now, something that organization gets wrong, when you go back to my teaser example, they create programs and the programs are designed, it's designed with a flaw. So let's say, for instance, if it is like the counting of activities and you're going to give kudo points or give sales reps incentives, if they can make 50 phone calls or 150 phone calls in a day, we know that sales reps are going to game that system to death. Your thought is if they're making more phone calls, we've seen the ratio that we're probably going to get more appointments. And if we get more appointments, we're going to close more deals. So let's say, for instance, for every 20 calls, you're expecting an appointment. So let's say you're going to get five calls if they're making 100 phone calls. But in reality, they're just calling and hanging up. And none of them are having meaningful conversations. Obviously, your appointment setting is not going to work out, and you're definitely not going to close anything from that. In her book, Trish points out one idea that I feel that many of us will will make the mistake with at times. When it comes towards commission, we tell sales reps, we're going to give you a good commission, right? You're going to get something amazing. If you work hard, listen, you could make more money than the CEO. That's how it works. This is what you're going to get. But what we neglect to realize or neglect to tell the sales rep is that that same process is not as easy to conquer as we made it seem to be. Yes, you are going to get a healthy commission, but the sales cycle is about seven months long. Hmm. 
you're probably going to take about three months before you really catch up to speed. So we're not going to really make anything until 10 months in the process. And when that mark comes around and you do close the deal, you're not going to get the money for like another 30 days before the client pays and then you get the payout. So you're looking at about almost 11 months. Can your sales reps really survive on the meager base that you give them with a commission structure like that? Of course they can't. You got to figure out a way to make sure that the sales rep can win. Perhaps you need to give them more of a competitive base, something that is a fair market value, as Trish points out in her book. And realize, yeah, it's going to take a while for them to close the deal. The last thing you want is to pay all that money for a sales rep to come in and then walk out the door after two months or three months. No way. Set them up to succeed. That there's a whole nother episode all in itself. But let's say you're talking about your BDRs, your inside sales team. How can we incentivize them? Give them an opportunity to make some money. Let's say you have a long sales cycle and you're paying your account executives this cushy, decent base because you know it's going to take them seven months before they get a good deal. And when they do, they're going to get, they're going to, they're going to eat pretty well. But your inside sales or your BDR, these folks are dialing for dollars, baby. They're sitting there hustling, breaking them fingernails. And then all of a sudden you want them to wait for when that deal closes before they get a percentage. I worked in a company where the inside sales got 1%, the account executive got 10%. Now, I had to wait that long cycle. We sold to governments and to city and K-12s, and I had to wait until the deal was closed before I got a piece. Now, how excited do you think I was to make calls every single day, knowing darn well that I'm not going to see anything probably for at least seven months, maybe eight to 12 months? It's not exciting, right? So what if you gave your sales rep a different approach? Trish points this out in her book. What if you were to pay your sales reps per appointment set, but then you gave them not all of it at once, but you gave them a part at the beginning and a part at the back end. So I'm going to use some simple numbers. I'm not going to say these are the exact numbers, but based on your industry, based on the amount of appointments a sales rep can actually set, if you want to give them something else, what if you're going to give them like, I don't know, say $10 for each appointment that they set? $5 up front, $5 in a back end. This is going to ensure that they set quality appointments because if they don't and the account executive said it wasn't a great appointment, that it wasn't qualified, then your BDR won't get the back $5. So they're missing out on that. But some people will just game the system, right? How can you make sure it's set up properly so they can't do that? Well, here's one thing that you can do. If you start realizing that this person's get a lot of rejected opportunities, It's either the account executive is not doing something right or the BDR. So you can coach them and figure that part out. So that's easy. Here's the other challenge though. Sometimes those sales reps will say, check this out. I don't want to waste all my opportunities. I'm going to save some for next month. I already made an extra $200 this month. I'm going to sandbag a couple of these and put them on for July's opportunity list. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. They're going to start hoarding these things like little squirrels taking all these things into their tree nests. But you got to put an incentive again on that. So Trish points out that you want to give a scale. Let's say, for instance, if you were to get 20 appointments per month, that's say five of them per week, we're going to give you $10 for those. But what if you got only 16 appointments? Should you still get $10 for each of those leads? No, we're going to give you probably say maybe $7 or $6 because you didn't hit the minimum limit of 20 appointments, because that's where we know people can definitely hit. However, say that you went above and beyond and you hit maybe 25, you went over the 100% mark, you went beyond what typically the min, you went above par, right? If that's the case, then maybe we're going to give you $12 or $13, $15 per appointment set. That incentivize the sales rep or the inside sales rep to be able to produce quality appointments, they're still going to get half up front and get the rest on the back end at the end of the month if those opportunities were deemed as qualified. Now you have a qualified standard, you make sure that the account executive is following that, your sales rep is following that, everyone is happy, the company is happy. Your BDR is making some money because they have debt that they need to pay, they have bills as well. You don't want them to sit there starving all day and then eventually quit and go somewhere else. Keep them, it's again easier to keep someone that's good than to go ahead and start re-interviewing and trying to find people over and over again. You can make your programs a little bit more elaborate or simpler, but this is one of those things that I just, I'm very strong, I'm a strong believer in, that if you pay people right and you coach them and you train them, you get the right people, they're going to perform for you, but you got to make sure they eat. Also, you got to make sure that the process is not gamed. Make sure it's something that everyone can walk away with and say it was fair. 
Now, the book that I recommend that you check out, you can test it out by going to audibletrial.com slash TSE. Look up the sales development playbook written by Tris Bartuzzi. She's absolutely fantastic. We had her on our podcast a while back and we have a link in the show notes. Again, it's the sales development playbook by Trish Bartuzzi. Straight up fantastic piece of content. And you can get it for free. Just go to audibletrial.com slash TSE. Get 30-day free trial and you get the book for free. Swipe up on the cover art if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or if you're listening anywhere else, just simply go to the show notes to salesevangelist.com slash the word episode number 1115. The salesevangelist.com slash the word episode number 1115. I share this with you because I want you to be successful. I want you to find more ideal customers. I want you to build stronger value. I want you to close more deals. But most importantly, I want to challenge you each and every single day to go out and do big things. Stay tuned for a scene from our next episode. We use Zoom. I know you use Zoom as well. We do all of our sales calls on Zoom because we know that that human contact is so, so valuable. And so why wait until later in the process to get face-to-face? We can do it earlier. People feel like they know you before they ever meet you. And you can eliminate some of the awkward kind of slow start. How I call them how's the weather type of questions. You can kind of get those out of the way because they feel like they know you already. I hear that all the time from people who send videos in this prospecting scenario. Listen, I hope you enjoyed the show today as much as I did. And if so, I ask that you leave us an honest rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. The cool thing about this is that when you listen to the show and you brag about us, people are going to come back behind you, read those reviews and say, you know what? Pam said something good about Donald. This podcast must be good. Jason comment here saying that it helped him in his sales efforts. It must be real good. Let me just go ahead and hit subscribe too. Listen, I truly appreciate you and appreciate your reviews and your subscription. Also, tell your friends about the podcast, anyone you know that's in sales that can benefit. Our show today was produced by myself and the Sales Podcast Network. It was edited and mixed together by the one and only Jershin Bale. our content writer and show note creator is Mrs. Shannon Rasmussen. You can find audio credits to this and all of our episodes in each of our show notes. And as always, I am your host, your coach, your mentor, your guide down the sales journey, Mr. Donald C. Kelly, the sales evangelist. Sales Podcast Network.